Good evening. Good evening. This is All India Radio and I am Valsa Williams. With me is Vaibhav Jyotsna Srivastav with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews the response measures in view of Cyclone Omphon developing in the Bay of Bengal. Cyclone Omphon intensifies into a super cyclonic storm. Fishermen advised not to venture into North Bay of Bengal along and off West Bengal Odisha coasts. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 38.29%. ICMR issues revised strategy for testing. Delhi government allows plying of buses, taxi, cabs, auto and e-rickshaws with certain restrictions, shops to open on odd even basis. Remaining CBSE examinations for class 10th and 12th to be held from 1st July till 15th July. And India backs European Union resolution at WHO for an impartial, independent and comprehensive probe in the coronavirus crisis. The Prime Minister has directed that all necessary measures be taken to complete evacuation of people from areas in Cyclone Omphon's path and maintain adequate quantities of essential supplies. The Prime Minister today chaired a high-level meeting to review the response measures in view of Cyclone Omphon developing in the Bay of Bengal. He took stock of the situation and reviewed the response preparedness as well as the evacuation plan presented by the National Disaster Response Force, NDRF. Later in a tweet, Prime Minister Modi said he prays for everyone's safety and assured all possible support from the central government. The India Meteorological Department has informed that the super cyclone is expected to make a landfall on West Bengal coast in the afternoon of 20th May as an extremely severe cyclonic storm with wind speeds ranging up to 195 kilometers per hour. It would be causing heavy to extremely heavy rainfall in the coastal districts of the state. In West Bengal districts of East Mednipur, South and North, 24 Parganas, Howrah, Hooghly and Kolkata are likely to be worst affected. The storm is also likely to impact coastal districts of North Odisha, including Jagat Singhpur, Kendrapara, Bhadrak and Baleswar. The Met Department has warned of storm surge of about 4 to 5 meters height above the astronomical tide, which would inundate low-lying coastal areas of south and north 24 Parganas and 3 to 4 meters height in East Mednipur district of West Bengal at the time of landfall. The cyclone has the potential to cause extensive damage in the coastal districts of West Bengal. During the meeting, all concerned have been advised to make adequate preparations to ensure maintenance of essential services like power and telecommunications in the event of damages caused to them and also to review their preparedness well in time and ensure quick resumption of services in the event of any disruption. Indian Coast Guard and the Navy have deployed ships and helicopters for relief and rescue operations. Army and Air Force units in these states have also been put on standby. NDRF has deployed 25 teams in Odisha and West Bengal. Additionally, 12 teams have been kept on standby. The Met Department has been issuing regular bulletins with latest forecasts to all the concerned states. Union Home Ministry is also in continuous touch with the state government. The high-level meeting which took place in New Delhi was attended by Home Minister Amit Shah, Principal Advisor to the Prime Minister P.K. Sinha and Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gauba, besides other senior officers. The supercyclonic storm Omphon over West Central and adjoining central parts of South Bay of Bengal moved nearly northwards with a speed of 7 km per hour during the past six hours. Coastal Odisha is likely to experience light to moderate rainfall at many places from this evening, with heavy falls at isolated places over the region. Coastal districts of Gangetic West Bengal are likely to experience light to moderate rainfall at many places, with heavy falls at isolated places tomorrow. Light to moderate rainfall will occur at most places with heavy to very heavy falls at a few places over the western districts of Assam and Meghalaya on the 21st of May. Fishermen have been advised not to venture into North Bay of Bengal along and off West Bengal Odisha coasts till Thursday. Director General of NDRF SN Pradhan has said that the force is fully prepared in view of Cyclone Omphon. He said NDRF teams are being deployed in Odisha and West Bengal.
अभी जो स्थिति है उड़ीसा में तेरह टीमें तैनात की गई हैं ग्राउंड पर और पश्चिम बंगाल में सत्रह टीमें तैनात हो जाएंगी आज देर रात तक या कल सुबह तक इस तरह से एक्चुअल फील्ड तैनाती है वो तीस टीमों की हो जाएगी दोनों राज्य मिलाकर उड़ीसा में सात टीमें जो है स्टैंड बाय में रहेंगी बटालियन हेडक्वार्टर में और उसी तरह से पश्चिम बंगाल में चार टीमें स्टैंड बाय में रहेंगी इसके अलावा मैं ये भी बता दूं पूरे भारत में छह और एनडीआरएफ के बटालियन है वहां चार चार टीमों को हॉट स्टैंड बाय में रखा गया है ताकि किसी भी शॉर्ट नोटिस पर उनको एयरलिफ्ट करके गंतव्य स्थल पर लाया जाए बंगाल या उड़ीसा में A cyclonic storm Ompon has intensified into a super cyclonic storm. The Odisha government has already begun its preparations for tackling the possible cyclone. A report. In view of Umpoon Special Relief Commissioner of Odisha Pradeep Jaina informed that the collectors of the alerted districts have already started the evacuation process of the people from kacha houses to nearest cyclone shelters apart from this government has also planned to shift expectant women and other people with an illness to the nearest hospital by tomorrow SRC has advised to people shifting to cyclone shelters to carry important papers such as identity card land documents medicine etc he has also advised keeping radio and torch handy the state government has also suspended fishing activity till 20 may fishermen are advised not to venture into sea during this time itish singh rathor ai news katak bhubneshwar new delhi bhubneshwar ac special train will run on a diverted route for 4 days due to the cyclone omphon the railways ministry said the train numbers 02823 and 02824 starting from bhubneshwar from the 19th to 22nd of may and starting from new delhi from 18th to 21st of may will run on a diverted route the train will run via bhubneshwar angul sambalpur city jharsuguda raurkela tata bypassing bhadrak baleshwar hijli route The ministry said the decision was taken for the safety and security of both the passengers and the trains. Passengers going from and coming to Baleshwar and Hijli Kharagpur will not get service of this train for 4 days. The ministry said East Coast Railways is keeping a close watch over the development related to the cyclone. The recovery rate of COVID-19 patients has improved to 38.29% in the country. A total of 96,169 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in the country so far, in which 36,824 persons have been cured, while 3,029 deaths have occurred. In the last 24 hours, 2,715 patients are reported cured. In terms of confirmed cases per lakh population, India has so far about 7.1 cases per lakh population vis-a-vis -vis around 60 cases per lakh population for the world as a whole. In Spain it is 494 cases per lakh population, in the US 431 cases, in Italy 372 cases, in Germany 210 cases, in the UK 361 cases and in France 209 cases per lakh population. Russia has 195 cases per lakh population, Turkey has 180 cases, Iran has 145 Brazil has 104 cases per lakh population. The central government is pursuing its preemptive and proactive approach for prevention, containment and management of COVID-19. COVID-19 management efforts are being regularly reviewed and monitored at the highest level. The Indian Council of Medical Research has released a revised strategy for COVID-19 testing. All symptomatic individuals with history of international travel in the last 14 days will be tested. All symptomatic contacts of laboratory confirmed cases will be tested. A report. According to the ICMR strategy, COVID-19 testing will be done of all symptomatic healthcare workers and frontline workers involved in containment and mitigation of the disease. All patients of severe acute respiratory infection will also be tested. Besides, asymptomatic direct and high-risk contacts of a confirmed case will be tested once between day 5 and day 10 of coming into contact. All symptomatic persons with acute respiratory infection, fever above 38 degrees Celsius, and cough within hot spots and containment zones will be tested all hospitalized patients who develop these symptoms will also be tested all symptomatic persons among returnees and migrants will be tested within 7 days of illness no emergency procedure should be delayed for lack of test suparna saikya air news delhi in our series experts speak on all india radio we bring you the views of the leading medical experts on covid-19 
Dr. Prasoon Chatterjee from the Geriatric Medicine Ames suggested to the senior citizens to stay at home as they are more prone to catch the COVID-19 infection. सीनियर सिटीजन को एक्सरसाइज करते रहना चाहे वॉकिंग हो चाहे रेजिस्टिव ट्रेनिंग हो चाहे योगा हो ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज हो और खुश रहना है आपको ये नहीं समझना है दिस टर्म इज नॉट एक्चुअली सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग ये फिजिकल डिस्टेंसिंग आप वर्चुअल वर्ल्ड में मोबाइल हो जाए कंप्यूटर के थ्रू अपने रिश्तेदार से बात करते रहे अननेसेसरी घर के बाहर मत जाइए क्योंकि आपका जो इम्यून सिस्टम है वो कंपेरेटिवली यंग एज के मुताबिक वीक है कम कम खाइए बार बार खाइए फ्रेश फूड वेजिटेबल्स खाइए क्योंकि उससे आपका इम्यून सिस्टम इम्प्रूव होगी Dr Ambuj Roy of the Cardiology Department Ames has advised heart patients to follow social distancing very importantly in the larger population it has given them time to understand the seriousness of the disease the precautions they need to take how to live with this they have practiced social distancing the elderly the people who already have heart disease people who have had brain strokes people who have lung disease people who have some kind of cancer in general who are people who are more than 65 years of age they are much more prone to a more severe form of the disease if they get the disease The news services division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone in program today will bring you a special discussion on COVID-19. Dr. Avdesh Sharma, an eminent psychiatrist and consultant will participate in the discussion. Listeners can ask questions related to stress, anxiety and depression during the COVID-19 pandemic on toll-free telephone number 1800 Double one five seven six seven. You can also ask your questions on the telephone number zero double one two double three one double four double four, and post queries on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts by the hashtag Ask AIR. This can be heard tonight on the FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9:25 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.com and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. The fourth phase of the nationwide lockdown has begun today. The Union Home Ministry had extended the nationwide lockdown yesterday for 14 more days till the 31st of this month. The fourth phase of lockdown will however witness substantial relaxation from its previous versions. The Home Ministry has put out a list of activities which will remain prohibited throughout the country for the next 14 days. Here is a report. All domestic and international air travel of passengers except for medical or security services shall remain prohibited even in the fourth phase of lockdown. This however does not include the flight operations permitted by home ministry. Except for shramik special, few other special trains, parcel and freight trains, the railways as well will not resume its complete passenger operation. Metro trains too will have to wait in the fourth phase of lockdown. Schools, colleges, educational, training and coaching institutions will also remain shut nationwide people will have to wait at least for the next 14 more days before going out to a restaurant hotel or for any other such hospitality services however for the ease of passengers eateries and canteens have been permitted to operate at railway stations airports and bus depots cinema halls gymnasiums shopping malls entertainment parks and any other such high gathering places will remain prohibited nationwide public gatherings of any kind in including political social and cultural congregations will not be allowed anywhere as a measure of caution access to places of worship and religious gatherings as well remain strictly prohibited night curfew barring for essential work will continue to remain in force from 7 in the evening till 7 in the morning anand chaturvedi air news delhi The Delhi government has said that in view of the fourth lockdown which will continue till the 31st of May barber shops spas saloons schools colleges coaching institutes and Delhi metro services will remain closed Addressing media Delhi chief minister Arvind Kejriwal said transport services will be allowed in the national capital keeping in mind social distancing norms Flying of buses in the city have been allowed with maximum of 20 passengers and people boarding the buses in the city will have to be screened first. Taxis and cabs will be permitted with only two passengers at a time, while auto rickshaws and e-rickshaws will be permitted with only one passenger. He said on two-wheeler no pillion rider will be allowed. The chief minister said construction activities are allowed in the national capital now, but only with laborers who are in Delhi at present. 
He said market complexes in the city will open on odd even basis with strict social distancing norms. The chief minister said 10,054 cases have been reported in Delhi so far, out of which 4,485 persons have been cured, which is 45% of total cases, and 160 people have died due to the infection. He said the Delhi government has to gradually move towards opening the economy as we used the lockdown period to make arrangements to deal with COVID-19. Our correspondent reports that private offices can open at full strength, but they should try that most of the staff works from home. Sports complexes and stadiums can open, but without spectators. Giving permission for some activities, Delhi Chief Minister made it clear that in containment zones, no activities will be allowed except essential services. Stepping out of homes for the people between 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. except for essential services will also be prohibited in the city. Carpooling or car sharing will also be not allowed for cab aggregators. Restaurants can open for home delivery, but dining facilities will not be permitted. Religious gatherings are barred and a total of 50 people can attend marriage functions, while 20 people can take part in funerals. Anand Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. The Rajasthan government has issued detailed guidelines for the lockdown 4.0 this evening. Additional Chief Secretary of Home Department Rajiv Swaroop told that public transport will be allowed in green and orange zones with certain conditions, but public transport in the red zone will remain closed. No activity will be allowed in the containment zones. Offices in the red zone will be opened with 50% employees. He informed that all activities in the green zone will be allowed. The Kerala government has announced detailed guidelines for the lockdown phase 4 today. Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan said that the central guidelines on fourth phase of lockdown will be followed in Kerala along with state-centric measures. He informed that the public transport including waterways will be allowed within the district with 50% seating capacity. The minimum bus fare is hiked by 50% to tide over the loss. The inter-district public transport will not be there whereas private vehicles are allowed for inter-district travel without pass from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. with the exception for emergency services. Beverage shops and bars will be opened as soon as the online facility will become functional. Barber shops will be opened without AC. Marriage functions with maximum 50 people is permitted. For funeral functions, a maximum of 10 people is allowed. Sunday will remain a complete lockdown in the state with only essential services. As part of One Day Bharat mission, flight from Abu Dhabi carrying expatriates will arrive in Kochi soon and flight from Doha carrying 183 passengers is scheduled to arrive in Korikode Airport today night by 10.40 p.m. Mayusha Foya News from Tiruvannapuram. The Sikkim government has issued new guidelines for lockdown 4.0 following directives of the Union Ministry of Home Affairs. The new guidelines will be applicable till the 31st of May with many relaxations in Sikkim, which is yet to report a COVID-19 case. All educational, training, coaching institutes, hospitality services except food outlets and restaurants, cinema halls, shopping malls and complexes, gymnasiums, sports complexes, swimming pools, entertainment parts, theatres, bars and auditoriums, religious places and all socio-political and other gatherings have not been allowed or will remain closed during the fourth phase of the lockdown. Congregation of not more than 20 people is allowed for funerals. All taxis, private, government and two-wheeler vehicles are allowed to ply within the state without permission of the district authority on an odd even formula and following social distancing and other norms. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews the response measures in view of Cyclone Omphon developing in the Bay of Bengal. Cyclone Omphon intensifies into a super cyclonic storm. Fishermen advise not to venture into the north of Bay of Bengal along and off West Bengal Odisha coasts. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 38.29%. ICMR issues revised strategy for testing. Delhi government allows plying of buses, taxi cabs, auto and e-rickshaws with certain restrictions, shops to open on odd even basis. Remaining CBSE examination for class 10th and 12th to be held from the 1st till the 15th of July. And India backs European Union resolution at the WHO for an impartial, independent and comprehensive probe in the coronavirus crisis. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. 
The Central Board of Secondary Education today released the date sheet for class 12th board examinations for the remaining papers. It also released the date sheet for the rescheduled board examinations of class 10th for Northeast Delhi. The examinations will be conducted between the 1st of July to the 15th of July this year. The CBSE has also issued instructions asking students to carry their own sanitizer bottles, wear masks and follow social distancing norms during the examination. Parents will ensure that their ward is not sick. The class 10th examinations were postponed due to violence in the northeastern part of the national capital and then due to the lockdown. Class 12th examinations were postponed in view of the lockdown imposed in the country to combat COVID-19. In Jammu and Kashmir, the Union Territory Administration has taken various initiatives to implement uninterrupted midday meal scheme for government school children amid the lockdown in view of COVID-19 pandemic. Our correspondent reports that to make the scheme more successful and result-oriented, the administration is providing food security allowance to the children. Under the scheme, school health card program has also been launched by Lieutenant Governor G.C. Murmu on the 6th of March to improve the health and overall well-being of over 12 lakh students enrolled in various government schools across the Union Territory. The distribution of these cards started today in both Jammu and Kashmir divisions. Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gobba today chaired a National Crisis Management Committee meeting and discussed the preparedness and requirements for the upcoming super cyclone. He also spoke to Chief Secretary of West Bengal regarding their requirements and preparedness. <laughs> Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla has also spoken to Chief Secretaries of West Bengal and Odisha regarding cyclone Omphorn. As per state's request, 13 teams of NDRF have already been pre-positioned in West Bengal. Four teams are en route and four teams are on standby. In Bihar, about 5 lakh migrant workers have so far reached various destinations from different parts of the country. Over 1 lakh workers have arrived by road. Transport Commissioner Sanjay Agarwal said 505 trains carrying migrant workers will come to the state till the 26th of May. Mr. Agarwal said after speaking to the officials of 18 states, the government has arranged 825 trains to carry over 8 lakh stranded laborers. Mr. Agarwal said 50 to 60 trains will come every day in the coming days. Eight pair of trains are running within the state from bordering areas of UP to carry migrant workers. In Bihar, the first Air India flight under second phase of Vande Bharat mission carrying 41 stranded passengers from Canada and the United Kingdom reached Gaya International Airport this afternoon. Out of these passengers, 28 are from Bihar, while 13 are from Jharkhand. This flight came from London via Delhi and Varanasi. Six flights have so far been scheduled to land at Gaya Airport. These flights will come till the 24th of this month. These passengers have been sent for paid quarantine for a period of 14 days. The state government has arranged hotels for passengers. The Uttar Pradesh government will ensure safe, secure and dignified return of those migrant workers who are stranded at the border areas of the state. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has ordered officials to make arrangements for food, shelter and medical screening for migrant workers at all border areas. More from our correspondent. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath today said that no migrant worker will have to travel in trucks, two-wheelers or by foot in state and ordered officials to make arrangements of buses for them so that they can reach their destinations. Officials of Transport Department will ensure sanitization of buses and availability of sanitizer in them. No charge will be taken from any migrant worker for anything. Arrangement of food and drinking water will be ensured at all toll plazas along with the highways and major intersections. Additional Chief Secretary Home Avani Shavasti said that police and transport officials will do intense patrolling in night to prevent any migrant worker to travel in truck or by foot. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. As the figure of COVID-19 patients soars in Maharashtra, State Health Minister Rajesh Tope today approached Kerala Health Minister K.K. Shailaja to seek her opinion on the measures that needs to be taken to break the chain of the virus. Ms. Shailaja has been praised from various quarters for handling the COVID-19 outbreak effectively, resulting into less number of cases in the southernmost state. More details from our Mumbai correspondent. 
Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre today handed over the first of its kind, the COVID-19 Health Centre, to the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai. The Health Centre, although temporary in nature, has come up at the Bandra Kurla complex ground and has a capacity of 1,000 beds. The facility has been set up in a record time of two weeks and will be catering to patients from Mumbai and nearby areas. Additionally, half of the beds in the Health Centre are equipped with oxygen support and also has a pathology lab. In another development, the Nandurba district in North Maharashtra has been declared coronavirus free after remaining two patients infected due to the contagion were cured. Kunal Shinde, AIR News, Mumbai. In Chennai, the number of COVID-19 infected people has surged past the 7,000 mark. In the whole state of Tamil Nadu, 536 people were tested positive for the virus today, including 364 in Chennai alone. The state tally of the infection has soared to 11,760. Three people have died of the disease today, taking the death toll to 81. 234 people were discharged. Three Shramik special trains from Chennai are being operated today, one to Chhattisgarh and two others to Bihar. Over 1,400 guest workers are accommodated in each train. A fake video of a woman with an infant traveling between train bogies is circulating in social media, stating these are migrants trying to go home during the lockdown due to COVID-19. In a tweet, Press Information Bureau said this is an old video from Bangladesh and not from India. India has backed a European Union resolution seeking a probe into the response of the World Health Organization during the coronavirus crisis around the world. It calls for an impartial, independent and comprehensive probe at the earliest to review the experience gained and lessons learned from the WHO-coordinated international health response to COVID-19. The resolution has been presented to the World Health Assembly, which is holding its virtual session by teleconferencing in Geneva today. Total 120 nations, including Australia, EU, Brazil, Canada, Indonesia, Japan, Mexico, Norway, Russia, South Korea, South Africa, Turkey, Ukraine and the UK have sponsored the resolution. Founder member of Muslim Personal Law Board and educationist Kamal Farooqi has said that further extending the lockdown is a step in the right direction. Mr. Farooqi was also the chairman of Delhi Minorities Commission. He appealed to the Muslim community to offer prayers of Jumat ul Vida, the last Friday of Ramzan and Eid ul Fitr, following the government guidelines. The Eid celebrations, of course, would not be this time as per the traditions because we are passing through one of the worst crises faced by the entire world, clearly our country also. And we are very brave. We have been taking all the instructions of the government in the right spirit. And that's the reason we are not going to the masajid for Juma prayer, or, uh, even for the regular prayers. Now, uh, Juma al Buddha would also be there and we'll be having the Idul Fitar also. But we will follow the same instructions of our religious leaders as well as the others. We will not go to the mosque and we will offer our prayers at home only. We will not even invite the other people to our home and we'll keep the social distancing as being advised by government. Now, let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. In the national capital, minimum temperature will be 24 degrees Celsius, while maximum temperature is expected to be around 42 degrees Celsius. Delhi is likely to witness a partially cloudy sky. Mumbai will also witness partially cloudy sky. The minimum temperature in the city is likely to be 28 degrees Celsius, while maximum will remain around 34 degrees Celsius. In the south, Chennai will see a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperature will hover between 30 and 37 degrees Celsius. In the east, Kolkata will witness generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the metropolis will be 24 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be 33 degrees Celsius. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews the response measures in view of Cyclone Omphon developing in the Bay of Bengal. Cyclone Omphon intensifies into a super cyclonic storm. Fishermen advised not to venture into North Bay of Bengal along and off West Bengal Odisha coasts. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 38.29%. ICMR issues revised strategy for testing. Delhi government allows flying of buses, taxi cabs, auto and e-rickshaws with certain restrictions, shops to open on odd even basis. Remaining CBSE examinations for class 10th and 12th to be held from 1st to 15th July. 
and India backs European Union resolution at WHO for an impartial, independent, comprehensive probe in the coronavirus crisis. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.